Um, hang on, where have I put that? Um, yeah. Turn that up a little bit. There we go. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, hello, my name's Hoffman. Um, we're doing the Kraken stream again. How the devil are you all? Uh, let's say hello to you all. Uh, Platon42, Corruptor, where's my G at? Uh, Commander Keen, NNCTLB. Nickel, Tibble, 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 yep. Uh, Pyro, Night Shift, <laughs> going digital. Uh, Fusion, uh, who has Zykes? Welcome in, Zykes. Uh, are you one of the, one of the, one of the, one of Fusions, mate. So one of the, one of that crew. Mad Pew, welcome in. Yeah, another TTE stream. Yeah, we are on on form. Lars 18. Uh, who else did I see there? And Lars 18th as well. Uh, Darn Geek and of course Commander Keen. How the devil are you? Uh, Hollow Leviathan, welcome in. Uh, here to see the TTE magic. Oh, mate, yes. Uh, Cloaked Alien, Hoover Phonic. How the devil are you all? Uh, I'm doing great. Um, I've got the next two days of work. You can blame Fusion for your attendance. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. I like blame. You know, where there's blame, there's a claim. So, uh, you want to see the TTE? Let me just do the TTE quick. Anyway, so we got that now. It's on. <laughs> it's on hand. <laughs> uh, Braxton, welcome in. I uh, hope you're all well. Is the music uh, too loud or uh, just right? Uh, um, versus the. Uh, might come in handy. It's, I've got this my secondary be right back now, so <clears throat> I've got two of them. <clears throat> so yeah, it's pretty peachy. Um, you've seen that crack intro anyway, but it's been slightly modified for the final of BC Kid, which we finished. Well, I finished last week, or this week, somewhere. Anyway, over the last week, since the last stream, uh, music volume is fine, perfect. Um, yeah, so since last stream, um, uh, yeah, BC Kid's been done, right? It's been finished. So what we're gonna do for the first part of the stream <coughs> is we're going to basically run through how that was done. Um, Especially thanks to Platon42. Um, and also, uh, I'll show you the README, because the README is extensive. So, um, I thought that'd be a nice way to... Uh, I mean, yeah, Hyperphonic, you are right. Uh, Neo Color Earth should be uh, uh, as loud as possible. But, you know, we're, we're starting out the stream show. So, yeah, we're going through BC Kid. Run through the README, show you the decisions that were made. How it was squished onto one disc. And some other curveballs that came out of the woodwork. One of them, very annoying, took me two days to fix. And it wasn't even a problem with the crack, really. But we'll get onto that later. Um, after that, I think what we're going to do... Um, now, I don't think he's here yet. He might be busy. But these four discs contain a copy of Pugsy with copy protection. Now, if you know Francis, regular on the show, he's not here at the minute, or he might be, who knows, he's probably in the background. Uh, he developed this game for the Amiga. Um, so, yeah, we are definitely going to crack this, just because Francis is a friend of the stream, and also my boss. Um, no, they're not original, of course they're not. <laughs> I mean, he's got some originals, but I wouldn't dare put those in my disk drive. But, yeah, I mean, you know... Nothing quite like uh, cracking your boss's 30-year-old Amiga game uh, on stream. But we're not going to do that one today. Um, I do have a plan for it because I've taken a very, very quick look at it. And I think um, I think we get some uh, quality of life improvements on it. But what we will be looking at today is this. Let me see if I can get that right. Hang on. If you can read that. There you go. That's what we'll be looking at. Copy protection, yes. Copy protection, or the removal of thereof, yes. Uh, so this is a good one because it's got uh, MFM protection, so it, there's specific disc format that you can't... Well, you can actually burst nibble it. It's very easy to copy the disc, but that's, you know, that's lame. So it's also got novella protection and saving as well. So, you know, 
all, th all, all three, you know, it's like the triple, that one. So that's what we're going to look at today. But as you well know, as we like to do on these things, is we like to run ourselves. Oh, a couple of other little things as well. Uh, you probably can't see it very well there, but if you look just there on my Amiga, you see it's got a, it's got an HDMI port now. Look at that! So uh, thanks to Retro32 for sending us the uh, 3D printed um, case for that thing. Bloody lovely! It just sits in there perfectly. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, he 3D printed it for me. Um, he also sent me uh, these. Which is uh, some nice. Uh... Oh, you can't really see it on there, but there you go. Some nice Retro 32 floppy disk labels, which we will need because I'm starting to run out of space scribbling all the stuff up on the disks I'm using. So, yeah, that's that. So, first things first. Uh... How nice you can write cracking tools on them. Yes. Uh, like uh, that one that says uh, dev crack, which is the second dev crack disc. For those of you who were here last week and saw the read write error on my uh, dev pack source, di source code disc and how no no worrying that was, um, yeah, we should be uh, alright this week. So, uh, let's start how we like to start with these things, which is with a little demo. And we got a good one actually. And just to explain, if. Uh, so just from this, who knows what this demo is? It's obviously a sanity demo, but do you know which demo this is just by that? First person, the person that guesses it right, gets 5,000 internet points. Or better still, 5,000 TTE points, how about that? You can't exchange TTE points for anything. Uh, darn geek, no, frames are not dropping. I'm probably just streaming too hard. Oh, deck! Well done. Hey Carl, how you doing mate? I've already shown off with the, the good shit that you gave us, so... A bit late for that. <clears throat> Is it 30 years? Bloody hell. Um, right, that's just the boot block. How cool is that? Very nice. Hey Polpo, how you doing? I'm going to pause that, because I want to listen to that later. Um, here we go. Uh, Sanity are more than extremely proud to present a new file track mo. Even though it's, you can't call it a track mo if it's anyway. Interference released uh, the first of the fifth, 93. Yeah, it is 30 years old. Fucking <laughs> hell. Woo, Francis. Hey, dude, mate. It's a good soundtrack on this one, yeah. So when this goes black, we know it's uh, R32 merchandise all over the place. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, how you doing, Francis? Hope you are, mate. Uh, we've picked our target. Um, we're going to be doing Pugsy next time. So today we're doing Ar Archipelagus. So that's what we're doing today. Um, but we've got to go through BC Kid first. After we've had a demo. And this is Interference by Sanity.
Go. Bam. Look at that round of applause. Oh, you missed the sanity demo, Minimo. No, mate, I'm sorry. Yeah. Give it a round of applause. Oh, it's good seeing that. I haven't seen that for ages. Um, yeah, I just grabbed it out and put it on. Hey, Nags. I haven't seen you around for a while, mate. I hope you're well. Nesky12, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Uh, right, that is that disc uh, ready for something else. Uh, where are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, let's just reset that. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, and play that. There we go. Lovely. Right. So, uh, how are we doing? Yeah, we're doing good, mate. We are doing good. Uh, we're cracking soft. I don't know if you've been here for the with the last three weeks. We've been cracking copy protection with. Um, uh, so if you've not been here before, uh, my name's Hoffman, I uh, write tunes, I make demos, uh, make video games, uh, mostly around this system, but I do like a lot of retro systems. But this is the machine of choice today, and the current uh, stuff that we're doing is um, uh, basically removing copy protection with an action replay and an Amiga 500, because why not? You know, it's fun, isn't it? Um, who's, who's ill? Uh, two weeks ago, dislocated my knee while hiking. Oh, Jesus. Oh, mate, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, well, I hope you get better as soon as possible, man. Much love. Um, uh, Topodelius. Oh, I think I've said that right the first time. Uh, Amiga takes you back to your childhood. I've been using these things for years. <laughs> haven't stopped. I love them. Uh, welcome in anyway. First time chatter. So, right. Uh, just going to turn it down a touch my end. Actually, turn it down a touch here as well, actually, just so we've got a bit of a bit of speaking room. So, uh, oh, Niverig, how you doing, mate? As well, welcome in. So let's go back to let's go to the desktop. There we go. So we can see. So, uh, so after, so you remember last week we wrote the routine to rip all of the files off of the disk automatically. So it would just basically write, you know, take a file off the di original disk, unpack it, and then save it. Right, so after we finished that, um, I brought all the files down to PC because uh, to explain, if you missed last week, PC Kid is a Factor 5 game and Factor 5 can fit a lot of space on their disc. Um, so the only way you're gonna be able to squeeze that back onto a single disc is by employing some more modern compression techniques um, and probably a bit of jiggery pokery as well. So, just to demonstrate, if we go into here, I think this is, so this is the original 49 files that we ripped here. Do so you remember these? Code, uh, demo, e, blah, 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 blah. 49 files. So the total uh, byte count we've got for that was 3,000, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, that many. <laughs> Numbers are failing me today. Uh, there we go. Basically about 3 meg. 2.92 meg. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what language am I using? Well, it's an Amiga, so it'll all be 68,000 assembly. So, yeah, that's how big it turned out. Um, where are we? Uh, Jay Belur, how you doing? I've said that wrong again, I know. Um, so, just to guide me through what's happened last week, let me just pull up the readme for the release that I've prepared. Hang on. TTE, isn't it? No. Uh, Amiga TTE. Uh, BC Kid. Read me. Okay, so this is the readme file for it. Let me 
you move that down there so I can see what you lot are saying. Pillock, how you doing, mate? Welcome in. Uh, okay, so there, this is our readme for re TT Release 2, which is going to get released today. Release code TT02, release date uh, 8th of the 11th, 2023. BC Kid, one disc and high score saver. That was a tricky one, that. Uh, originally released in November 1992. So it's uh, 11,329 days old. <laughs> so, yeah, none of this zero days business. Um, oh, so there you go. So there's a right up here basically says original protection. They don't do any uh, checksums, uh, no hard protection on the disc. Hercules Studios, welcome in. Uh, what's the best way to play Amiga games? Uh, on PCs, Amigas are so expensive to buy nowadays. Uh, it'll wrap to zero at some point. That's a good point. Uh, uh, probably win YoAE, I think. It's a, you know, if you know what you're doing. Um, someone else, if anyone else is in the chat, would like to give Hercules a, a good option there. I think something like the like the Raspberry Pi. I think is probably going to be a better option if you've got one. Everyone's got a Raspberry Pi in their house. And there's, um, is it Amiberry? And the Amiga Game Selector, like if you want to play, if you just want to play games, that's probably the best way to do it, because it'll be like a solid 50 frames a second on your machine, on your screen. Uh, or the A500 Mini. I don't like the A500 Mini. I've got one, but I don't like it. Um, but it is the simplest way to do it. Like it will work, but yeah, I don't like it. Um, okay, so ripping game files. That's what we did last week. Right now, compression. So. We've got three mega data, and we need to get it uh, uh, down to less than 880k, right? So this was the Hunger Games of compression. So the three compressors that I tested out was LZ, which is a super fast decompressor and pretty damn good ratio. As you see there, it was like, you know, it was basically nearly a megabyte. ZXO, which has a better compression ratio, as you can see there, 915k. So this is pretty close, but not quite there. Um, so that's probably in the running, because the decompressor on that is quick. It's very quick. And then Shrinkler, which absolutely smashed it to pieces, and would have left us with about <coughs> you know, 70k on the disc. However, the decompressor on that is very slow. So I didn't want to go that route if I could avoid it. So... Uh, that's where we got to. So we decided to pick ZXO, and thankfully, uh, Platen 42 has got a fantastic, uh, super fast, improved speed decompressor uh, that we use for this release. <coughs> um, so there you go, there's our results. ZXO is basically our winner, um, but we're a bit short. Um, oh, you poked Zender over to ZXO for Rowcraft earlier. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll show you the code for it in a minute. I've uh, worked out a way of dealing with the um, uh, the overhang when doing an overlap decompress, which is quite fun. <clears throat> we'll explain that later. Yeah, so, so ZXO is what we went for in terms of packing. <clears throat> but we need to get a little bit more ZX0, actually. Um, so we need to get a bit more space, right? So the best way to do that is to go and hunt down the audio data and apply some compression on that. Uh, did you take a look at the compressor thread on EAB? I've read that multiple times. Um, I like to look at compressor. I like to prefer to do my own testing and see what, see what wins. At the moment, I think ZXO is probably my favorite because it's a really good ratio versus, um, <clears throat> as you see there, in terms of that data, it, it destroyed LZ. There is a there is a trade-off with that though, is that the compressor on the PC side takes fucking forever. And I mean forever. Right? Takes forever. Um so yeah, so the readme goes into more detail about uh three compression methods that I've got for audio. One of them's a simple single date delta. A double delta, which is basically a seven bit um Need a faster PC then? Uh, well, as Francis, you probably know, uh, I transferred the files to my work PC, which is a 9.9, and then compressed them there and then brought them back. So, because <laughs> I was, couldn't wait for them. Um, so double delta is basically a 7-bit version of delta. So it does lose a little bit of quality, but not, not a lot. And it does actually compress better. 4-bit um, delta is what we used in Supremacy. 
it's just uh, yeah um, it's, it's huge gains because it basically halves all the sample data but you do lose a bit of quality um, and the music's quite good so I didn't really want to do that so actually uh, those two on top of each other you can see there we had like 14k of disk space or you know 14,000 bytes of disk space left which was fine um, they good this readme goes into a bit more detail you can pull this up later <clears throat> if you want to go into a bit more detail about where I found the um, ZXO sorry the TFMX uh, documentation which kind of explains how the files are laid out and how I could discover where the sample data started so there's all that there uh, I think I didn't play and get a big up in this I thought I put that in there Oh, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> must be in there somewhere. Um, oh, there he is. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, so the readme's got like links to you know sources for bits and pieces, all of this kind of stuff. So, uh, oh, hang on, Plate. Let's. Uh, there you go, Plate. And uh, post post your link again, mate. Um, I've made you a VIP. So. So. Um, yeah, if you remember the loader, uh, uh, Jabir, Jabir Adila, um, uh, it depends, it's a luck of the, it's a roll of the dice with, um, uh, with the streams, unfortunately. Sometimes it'll allow you to transcode, sometimes it won't, so, <coughs> uh, I might have to look at reducing my bit rate next time, just to, you know, give it a bit, uh, bit of space. Hey Freya, how you doing, mate? Um, so if you remember from last week, the routine, the loading routine, uh, takes uh, uh, two parameters, basically a file ID and a load address. Um, so uh, let me pull that up actually, have we got that here? I've got it in WinUAE at least, pull that up. <coughs> uh, yep, that'll do. So. So, we obviously had to build a new loader to replace the current loader. Let's have a quick look, see if we can pull this up. Dev pack. <coughs> yep, dev pack, yep. Lovely. Uh, DH1, crack, yeah. Uh, BC, oh my god, it's not even on here, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's on the disc somewhere. That's very annoying. Uh, okay, right. Well, basically, built a new loader that incorporated uh, our new loader, our disc builder, um, the same disc builder from Supremacy, and the decruncher. Um, and that would fit nicely within their loader and decruncher routines. In fact, there was still quite a bit of space left. So that was all done, and then I hit a snag because I discovered that the game does high score saving. Now, if you remember last week, uh, we found in this original source code this address 61000, uh, which was code that wasn't getting executed. Well, it turns out that was the address it was loading the high score table to. So, so we'd usually normally use the Rob Northern. Uh, uh, computing disk routine but it's massive so it wasn't going to fit anywhere in RAM um, so found the trap runner source code which has a complete read write uh, file system and everything else uh, hardware track loader uh, and track writer and then stole that code and then basically cut it to pieces um, so I can show you that because that is here which has been a fun thing, actually. So uh, I know Platon's done uh, uh, hardware disk writing, uh, reading routines and stuff before, but I, I was using this, the original uh, reading and writing routines from this code, and I've never actually written my own routines before. But I was just having a debug of how this works, <coughs> um, and uh, yeah, I didn't. I thought that when you would tell it to uh, tell the DMA to fire the data off of the disk into memory that it would start at sector zero but it doesn't it basically depends on when it picks up the sync signal so let's say for example you've got 11 sectors like that zero to uh, 11 right uh, or yeah whatever um, 
Basically, depending on which, on where it is around the disc, when it picks up a sync marker for a sector, it then starts reading. So you could actually start with sectors 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so yeah, I didn't realise that's how it worked. Um, uh, I'll have a look at that. Uh, I found the RNC disc routines, as you know, but they're all pre-assembled as DC. Yeah, yeah. I uh, haven't got around to disassembling them yet. They're really easy to dis disassemble those, though. So. Um, so yeah, I had no idea that's how it worked, which does make it quite... Uh, uh, tricky to decode a track within the same space, but you know, that's just you know. I'm starting to learn more about uh, hardware track, uh, hardware disc access um, as we do more of these, and it's really fascinating. Um, so yeah, yeah, yep. Uh, now actually, some subtle hardware bugs where it would miss sync word uh, by word, and still started the DMA transfer. Oh Christ. <laughs> And yeah, sectors out of the track can come out in any order, really. Yeah, that's what I found. I was just basically debugging it again and again, and every time it, it likes. I've never written my own track loader. No, um, I'm a lamer. <laughs> Repeated sectors are also a protection method. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Oh, nice, brilliant. Uh, it's good that you keep these things, Francis. Never too late to start. No. Um, but I was just borrowing someone else's code, basically. Well, that's the hardware. We don't want that. Track disc. So, basically, I, I, well, I had a spare track at the end of the disc to save the high school data. Um, and then just basically jerry-rigged this thing to, to basically, where is it? It's here. Uh, wait, that's wait drive. Main, da, da, da. Yeah, that's it. Uh, track bars. Where does it do it? <coughs> track right. Oh, there we go. That's it. So it seeks there. So we go back to the start of the disc. We then we seek zero. Then we seek to the last track on the disc. And then we just write a track. So it's a really small routine. I think if I can build it, will it tell me how big it is? <coughs> 694 bytes. Which is quite... Uh, I never write a whole loader, but uh, I did do a lot of different MFM decoders. Oh, nice. <clears throat> but yeah, it's a tricky game, um, the waiting and stuff. But yeah, yeah, you could also be naughty and use tracks 80 and 81, yeah, yeah. You can do that, but you shouldn't really do that because they're unreliable apparently or something, I don't know. And also you shouldn't be using that if you're making a standard copyable game. So yeah, that was that basically. Um, that also fitted, so in the original... Um, Factor 5, disk loading routines, decruncher, and high score saving. We managed to squeeze every, all the functionality we needed, and there was a little bit of space left over. Um, so that was that. Uh, wrap up. Uh, I won't bore you with that one, um, but you can read that. Uh, I was uh, trying to be clever, and I put myself into a corner and kept having a crashing, not a crashing boss, but a corrupting boss. This one is interesting though. Um, so, the game had been, I'd done the game, everything's fitting on the disc, loading uh, high scores, saving high scores, everything fits, crack intros on there, it's all good. I'm game testing it, uh, and I get through, I can get through all the levels, and I get to the penultimate boss. And then at one moment, it does, it basically fires things at you, and the cracked version would just keep crashing, just, just, like without without shadow of a doubt it just like every time would just crash i tried the original game would work fine um and i worked out what it was it says it on screen here anyway but basically where i'd i unpacked and loaded the crack intro into memory when we ran the game code uh, or the bootloader and everything else the original game doesn't clear any ram doesn't clean anything up before it uses anything right and there's this address section here, which is one of the parameters for that boss. That if it's not zero in RAM when the game starts, the game will crash at that boss. Um, and it took me two days to find this. <laughs> at which point they then added to a fucking RAM clearing routine. 
Sheep. Yeah, exactly. So I could actually get the original game. I could put a, a value in there of like one, 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 one. Play the whole game, and then the boss on the original game will crash because they don't clear that ram out. So um, yeah, Gwen, how are you doing? Welcome in Raiders. Um, uh, I did see what you were doing. You were doing Atari ST tunes, but actually, when I dropped in uh, on the lurk, I saw you were watching uh, old eighties cartoon intros, which was fantastic. So, Dobby Mooge, how you doing? Mark SW seventy six, NE seven, and of course Gwem, how you doing? Let me just clear my glasses here. Uh, so yeah, I'm just doing a quick rundown of what happened with BC Kid. Last week, uh, or since last stream, damn ugly bug, wouldn't want to chase it down. Yes, Tinker, we're gonna ship it. We're gonna ship it today. We are gonna ship it. I'm not getting the Amiga out to ship it today, but we are gonna ship it. Rigby's there. Um, also, you may notice there is an additional uh, little uh, channel point reward that you can click. Um, called We Can't See, and it goes like this. My eyes, the goggles do nothing. So if you end up, in, if we end up in a situation where you cannot see what I'm coding or what I'm doing because I've left the wrong bloody scene up, then by all means press that button. Uh, that's not the disc actually, mate. This is one of mine. I'm not sure where I put yours. Oh, yours is here. There, because that's a double density disc. So actually, maybe that's what we should do first, actually. Uh, let's do that. <clears throat> so, Pig Pen Pete, how you doing? Right, so that's, I have scooted over that quite a bit, um, but yeah. <laughs> you forgot to hack my BBS password. Glazed. Reward is on cooldown. I'll be back in. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I would expect me not to screw up the screw the scenes uh, every uh, uh, every five minutes. So right, does it even work? Well, we're going to find out. But I'm going to put pre arrays on. Uh, the track's red, but yeah. Right. So let's write our cracked a new cracked release onto floppy disk. Uh, so where have we put that? That's in Google Drive, Amiga, TTE, TT02, BC, Kid. <sighs> Look at that. Eight Outrun Redeem is on sale at 13k, it is, yeah. I don't know why I did that, because I swear some of you got 13k, right? And if you have, then <laughs> it's Black Friday, Black Wednesday. Oh, that disc is making some funny noises, Carl. Ah.
uh, there we go. Uh, that is outrunned. Um, I'll let you have that, Francis. Uh, but yeah, we'll crack your game next week, I reckon. We'll see. Uh, I can see over the horizon now. Salvia run, yeah, yeah. Or K run, it's another one. Um, yeah, that disc didn't work, but I do have a bunch of discs that are on my Amiga floppy drive. You can't see it, because I'm writing a disc at the minute. Uh, there are a bunch of discs that the last few tracks don't work for some reason, so um, I don't know whether it's alignment on that drive, or that drive needs maintenance or what, but um, loads of other discs work. But yeah, um, yeah, never mind. Prince Face, how you doing, mate? So, yeah, so we're just writing the BC Kid release onto disc here using our flux my floppy which is a grease weasel <laughs> I missed it bloody kids <laughs> one of my old EPs was called the Salvia EP uh, yeah uh, jab yes mate it's a bit of a running joke with uh, a lot of us Amiga streamers it is terrible um, if you've ever followed Nag Graham, which you should do because he's a fantastic streamer, lovely bloke. Um, he uh, he uh, put it as a... The ST port was worse. They're both terrible. Um, yeah, Outrun Amiga port is the ST port. But yeah. Um, uh, it, it's just basically... The intro was ridiculous. Uh, and I think I th he did a, like a 12 hour terrible Amiga game stream for charity, which he's doing next week, um, uh, a while ago. And I basically spent the entire day spending all of my channel points to basically just play that at him, like continuously for about, well, I think it's like once every two hours, I was just basically clicking the button every time. But yeah, so uh, it was great. It was so good. Right, so do we want to have a quick check of the TTE release? Uh, Amagus, yes. Uh, here we go. Right. TTE02. BC Kid. One disc with high score saving. Which I add. No other floppy disc crack of BC Kid has the high score and option saving built in. Ours does. Because that's how we roll. And also TTE cracked your mum on toast. Oh yeah, so we need to... Uh, appreciate the uh, brand new crack intro which is the same as the old one <laughs> but slightly modified here we go Bonus as well, bonus screen. Call the uh, TT World Headquarters. There we go. Uh, hey, Kill, I haven't said hello yet. Welcome in. Proper posh. Ah, here we go, right? You're ready for this. Text effect is cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was, uh, worked quite. Uh, two, 255 Telenet nodes. Wow, yeah. <laughs> now, the crack intro does have a new addition. So if I press the left mouse button or enter. We've got options. Look at that. Yes. So, as you may or may not know, Factor 5 games. Dino Blasters and BC Kid. Uh, we, 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 we don't do trainers here. We don't do trainers. Um, has It has a screen mode built in, but the only way you can disable it is by holding the mouse buttons during boot up. Right? Now, screen mode only really works on a CRT or in an emulator. It doesn't work anywhere else. Uh, definitely doesn't work here with my uh, HDMI or anything else. It's a complete mess. So by default, it's off. But I could go and switch that on if I was playing on a CRT. <clears throat> but there we go. You're going to hack the hack and do trainers. I've left you enough space for the disc to add another intro. So, Kato, mate, how you doing? Right, let's just have a quick look. This is where the game doesn't work. So, hear that noise? Probably don't. 
And it does a bit of a... Because the game date is kind of laid out nicely on the disc, except the last track is where the high scores are. So, uh, what hurts? I think it's like 57. It's a really weird hack. It's, yeah, it's very strange. Peter Lynn. Thanks for the follow. Vertex. Oh, nice name. First time. Welcome in. There you go. That's now saving, I think, the high scores. Yeah. And I, I, what? Ooh. Oh, still working. It's fine. It's just sounded a bit weird. There we go. BC Kid. And two button joystick. Yes. I'll have some of that. <laughs> right. I won't play this for too long. I do love it though. I, it's been an absolute joy playtesting this just to make sure it works because it's actually one of the best platforming games on the Amiga. So, no worries, mate. I forgot to message you to say that I'd. Uh... Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. This is no good. I'm not going to obviously play this for the whole game, but I have. Uh, I have completed this without any continues. Uh, it's just playable, it's good fun. Here we go. Can I see it now? Yay, there we go. And of course, you can do that thing where you go. There we go. Factor 5 knew their custom chips. And good code as well, actually. I'm quite impressed with the bits and pieces of the code that I've seen. It's good stuff. Very tidy. Just do the first level or two or whatever. There we go. Such a good game. It's a cracker, isn't it? I mean, the PC Engine version is good, but it's nice to see that we didn't end up with something terrible on the Amiga, you know? You've never played this? Oh my god! Uh, the Turrican uh, 3 code is worth a look. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't actually checked it out, but I might do at some point. Bam! <coughs> Was this bonk? Yeah, bonk on the PC engine, yeah. You didn't know this is me? Oh, mate. So there you go. That's a nice cutesy game. Incredibly playable. Just really fun. Uh, Token 3 is actually lots of little programs. Uh, this, this isn't the case here. It's one code block. And then it just loads data files. There's no other additional code on the disk after the game's loaded. So um, All the Bonk games are great though. Yeah, PC Engine. So, um, <coughs> so yeah, there we go. That is our next release. Uh, okay, let's just reset that. Put that back on. Now we need to do the release. So bear with me a moment. If only Commodore took off in Japan, yeah. Well, they had the Sharp X68000, so you know. Okay, I don't need Win UAE. But what I do need is sync term. Got the yes. Okay. Control 32. Make sure you can't see my keyboard. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yes. TTE 002. Uh, B C Kid want this. My eyes, the goggles do nothing. Ah. Ah. They see it works. 
brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Platon. <laughs> So if you don't know, that's the new Redeem. If you can't see what the hell I'm doing, then um, yeah, yeah. Uh, just press that button. I will make sure uh, and make sure we will look at the right screen. So I've just logged into the TT World Head War, uh, Headquarters and we're just adding to the one-liner. Uh, hang on. With high score saving. Today, release. Oh, fuck. There we go. Brilliant. That's in. <coughs> Welcome. Can I delete that? Oh, I can't be bothered. I'll just leave that there. Okay, file areas. Um, I forgot to ask, Carl or Fusion, is the area now open for the public? There's our Supremacy one disc version. Uh... ZYX common equals love. I, uh, I missed that. I didn't read it. I should go back there actually. But anyway, let's uh, upload Z modem and let's just check. Oh Christ! Uh, that's where's that? It's my downloads folder. Yeah, I don't want that. Uh, okay. Google Drive. Mega. TTE. BC Kid, no back. Oh, there it is. BC Kid zip. <coughs> Level sixty nine for upload. Okay, well, as long as people have got the. Uh... Okay, yeah. Okay, let's list the files. Oh no! What's happened there? Oh dear. That's no good. What's happened there? Uh, Curl has uh, logged in. File ID dot is there. Uh, oh, well, that's uh. Hang on, which to, what file the uh, not Unix like returns? I don't know. I can't remember which way around it's supposed to be on here. Uh, hang on. Yeah, it's, it's the same as I used last time. I just copied it. And by the way, how come the zip file is only 812 kilobytes? Um, because the compressor isn't quite as hard on ZXO. You can refresh the disk. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the compressor isn't quite as hard, and also the disc has got uh, a little bit of uh, blank space in it for the um, uh, for the basically for the high score area. And there's basically there's basically about two tracks left. But ZXO will compress further with something like Zip, where Trinkler does not. It basically comes out of the same size. This refreshes refreshes a little sketchy. Let's see if we can do it then. Uh, I don't know how we do this. View. Nope. View. Oh bloody hell! I know what's happened. Right, that's no good. Hang on. Can we delete that? Can I delete that? Uh, download, enter, view. No. Uh, view, escape. Um, you look at that date, your skin is crawling. Francis, mate, you have not worked with databases long enough. That is the correct date. That's not American date. Uh, how do I delete a file then? I flagged it. D? Or can I just upload it again and replace it? Uh, I'll log in and delete it. Okay. Well, glad you were here, mate, because I balls up the release. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, list files, help. Five is out, look. Uh, next file, previous side view contents. I don't, it looks like I don't have permissions to delete anyway, so that's not happening, is it? Yeah. Oh, meat lotion's just logged in as well. This files are still there, mate, still there. Come on, Carl, hurry up. <clears throat> oh, okay, not my date. Yeah, no, but nobody likes that kind of date, do they? Ah, here we go. He's logged in onto Node 5 now. Good lad. Let's get this really sorted. Whilst we're waiting for that, just a little point of note. If you're on English Amiga board, um, they have this little section called the zone. Now, if you're following, I had a few requests on the forum um, for basically the files to do with the cracking of Supremacy. So I released them. Basically, apart from the, the crack intro, everything's here. Like the C-sharp code for building the disk, uh, the C-sharp code for doing the delta compression on the samples, all of the original files, uh, the JSON for the disk builder, the source code files for the two disk version for the loaders, the source code files for the one disk version for the loaders. Um, uh, that's just on the zone. I'm not going to put those up on the TTE area. Um, they're just on EAB. You generally stay away from EAB now. Well, you know, it's, um, it's an interesting place, isn't it? <coughs> um, but, you know... There's a lot of people there, so. But yeah, if you want to get hold of the files, the source code and bits and pieces for the T the TTC primary release, look at how this stuff is all, all works and all that kind of stuff. Then it's all there. Um, I will keep a, a record of this stuff and then find some way to put it later. But in terms of, uh... there we go. Right, let's try this again. Um... Uh, is it you uploaded? Z modem. Enter. Right, and let's just double check that zip this time. Yeah, files are in there, that's good. Uh, okay. Uh, Google Drive, Amiga, uh, TTE, BC Kids. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <coughs> oh, well, it appears to be there. Weird. <laughs> okay. Well, it seems to be the right size as well. So... Uh, I kind of still want a hard disk version of Secanoid that doesn't use WHD load and keeps the OS alive. That's the CD32 version. <laughs> but you have to disable the CD32 saving, so... It looks good. So I think we might just call that a release, right? There we go. Release number two from TTE. BC Kid, one disk with high score saving. And a nice little option uh, at the start of it to determine if you want to use their silly screen mode or not. <clears throat> so, uh, I think even I'm going to press that button because I think it's time to do it. Uh, where is it? I don't even know where it is. Where is it? There it is. Thank you. <clears throat> there we go. The Diz is split, unfortunately. It looks... Oh, yeah. Well, that's... I mean, I, there's, that's your problem. It's not mine. <coughs> you run the BBS, mate. <coughs> now, I'll have to have a word with our, uh, our board manager. So, yeah. <coughs> right. Is that a cool version of Pike that seems to work with older boards? <coughs> right. So...
Now, we need our new target, right? Which is... Uh, uh, let's just show you again. We're going to do this. I'm not going to use this disc, though. Sysops issue. Yeah, totally. Um, so this is Archipelagos. A very strange and unique, fantastic game. I loved this game when I had a very cracked copy of it back in the day. Um... <clears throat> Amiga Kraken, aren't you a wee bit late to the party? Never too late to the party, mate. Like, you know, I've... Where is it? Got an Amiga 500 here. Why would you not crack a, a game? <laughs> like, you wouldn't crack a game, would you? Of course I would. Um, so, I'm not going to use this disc. Uh, also, uh, Control, uh, we've just released... Two, we've released two games so far. Supremacy, which has never had a fully uh, the parties today. Thank you, Hollow Leviathan. Uh, Supremacy one disc version, which no one disc version contains all of the intro and all of the game ending, and actually works all the way through. Um, and we've just released BC Kid, which is on one disc uh, and has high score saving, which is a feature that none of the other cracks have had so far. So. Yeah, we've actually created... So we're basically making releases for floppy disk for people that haven't got Amigas with... Uh, um, <laughs> with uh, WHD Load, which is no one, but there we go. The party never ended, yes. So, first thing we're going to do is... Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to call this... Actually, no, we're going to use that as our... We'll call that our files. We'll do that as arch files, right? And then on this disk... Uh, we're going to write, uh, so back to desktop, here we go. We're going to write an original copy of Archipelagos with our, with our grease weasel. There it is. Now, Patu, Kraken with Hoffman, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we need to take that out so that it just writes the flux data as is. Now, there's a clue to this straight away. And I, this is why I wanted to write the disc here, um, on stream. <clears throat> so now, now watch, watch the sector, watch the tracks here. Okay, that all looks fairly standard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. What are those gaps? There's gaps. <coughs> Weak sector protection. No. Those are basically tracks that aren't written to. There's nothing on them. Save space. I mean, apart from the fact you've got a gap on the disc, but yeah. Oh, look at that. Another gap. Oh, and another gap. Oh, look at that. Right, so. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to take a little copy of that. I'm going to save that as... Uh, place to save even oh yeah true but you know i think that's also dealt with i've already so full disclosure <coughs> i've already done this game because i was just practicing and stuff um so i've, I've done it but we're gonna do it from the top again or is we're gonna do the same way but um or similar way at least anyway right there we go archie but i'm gonna keep keep a, a track of this because we will need this later Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, basically, the, the, as far as I could tell, um, <clears throat> keep a track of this. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, so yeah, as far as I could tell, um, it just has gaps where they haven't written to the disc 
to to trip you up. So so you can't just say you can't just rip the loader and say read the entire disc and then dump that onto another disc. It's not going to do. Uh, you you tell it to read and then the, the loader will just shit itself because it's trying to read stuff tracks that it was never intended to read. So that's basically part of the protection of that. So. <clears throat> Uh, right, so what we're going to do is we'll go back to there and we'll just we'll just boot it, right? So we've got a copy of Archipelagos here now that's fully protected and everything else. <coughs> Let's just boot it. Right. There's no compression on this at all either. So we could really shrink it down, but. You can see. You're right, Corrupto, it's probably Whitaker's best tune this just fits the spookiness of the game perfectly. <laughs> Sharp objects, I didn't know that. That's a brilliant fact. This tune's so unsettling, I love it. The music from the demo was way more hectic. I didn't realise there was a demo of this. Let's get rid of that. Oh yeah, I need to be able to see. Okay, I can see now. Right. We're gonna hit our first problem, aren't we? Oh. I don't have a manual. <laughs> <coughs> um, oh dear. Right, so. Bloody copy protection, yeah, yeah. So, let's just, let's get the music back on. So, probably don't need this now. Because we're in, a, we're in a meagle land now. I will need it later. So obviously we can read the boot block, because you can always read the boot block, otherwise the Amiga's just not, the game's not, not gonna boot, right? So, what have we got there? A boot block. And the rest of the track is doing nothing. That's just random data in RAM from there from, from there onwards. So that first track is just a bootloader. <clears throat> and that's all it is. Okay, so if we try and read track uh, 1 to 20. Yeah, can't read that. <coughs> uh, Retro32, it's a good question. I've been looking at some of the ones that have been classed as hard. One of the hard, the two hardest that I know of are Double Dragon 2 and Exile. It actually took years uh, for Exile to be properly cracked. Um, Double Dragon 2 took uh, Weetabix about a month to crack, I think it was. But most people couldn't be bothered. This does have some interesting little... Uh, uh, I don't know if... I don't, Meat Lodge, I don't know if... Uh, uh, Dragon's Lair took many months, yeah. I don't think they had an action replay back then either, so. Right, so we can see we can't read the disc. Right. So, we have a way in. We need to read a boot block and we need to see what the hell it's doing. But first of all, I need to go and make sure that my good lady wife has a cup of tea. So I'm going to do you the new Be Right Back, and then I'll be right back after grabbing myself a drink. And, uh, yeah, see you in a bit.
Hello, welcome back. Oh, hang on. <laughs> You're a bit late, Vampire. We've already shipped it. If you go onto the uh, Retro 32 BBS, the one disc with high score saving version of. Sorry. Um, uh, BC Kid is, is out there. So. Uh, and there's a massive readme file if you want to read about the technical details of how it was cracked. Uh, because I thought that's a nice thing to add. Um, and then I'll probably release the source codes and bits and pieces later. So, um, Right, so, uh, if you've just joined us, we are cracking Archipelagos today. Uh, which is an interesting game. Well, it's a fascinating game. It's really good. Um, music by David Whitaker. Uh, 3D based game. Really good fun. Uh, really creepy. 9,999 levels. There is some procedural generation, but we'll get onto that later. It's a bit of a cheat, if, if you ask me. Uh, so, two types of protection. First of all, the disc format is a no-go. And secondly, it, there's a manual check. So, <coughs> looks like Outrun, but a pretty creepy puzzle game. Yeah, moves about as fast. So, as we start with all these things, let's read the boot block by putting the disc in the drive first. Okay. Uh, one, six, A0 to 20, yeah. Uh, oh, that's an interesting technique, okay. So we'll try and set the status register, which will then throw an exception, which that exception will then set the status register. Oh, okay, oh no, it, yeah. Kills DMA, kills interrupts. Copies the loader down to 400, and we're good. So just to make sure we're safe. <coughs> okay. Oh, that's the other thing we need. Uh, this one. Yeah, so in disk drive two, before we do anything else, let's uh, DIR one. Okay, CD one. Format Q. Yep. Cool, okay. So, we've got a disk to save some files onto now. So, disassemble... So, where were we? So, yeah. Kill, kill, kill. <coughs> yeah, none of us use the operating system to go into supervisor mode. A crackers, why would we go the right route? Uh, okay, so that is going to cop. It's going to set us into a kill state, basically. The operating system and all the interrupts are going to be gone. Then it's going to copy that loader down to 400. So let's just do that. <coughs> Hang on. Uh, there we go. Right, so back into the action replay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's the first thing this game does, isn't it? Which can trip up an action replay. So the first thing it does is it loads 800 into that location and then basically clears the RAM, which is a problem. Because as soon as you clear all the RAM, it basically screws over the uh, action replay a little bit. Okay. So let's just keep looking. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, we've got a real chesty annoyance. Uh, okay. Oh my god, that's clearing from address 8 as well. That's what screws over the action replay. Because it removes all the exception handlers out. Right, so first things first, let's get rid of that because that is going to cause us no end of trouble. The RAM clear is fine. That, in fact, let's get rid of that DBF as well. There's no point looping around nothing, is there? So, okay. Oh, Christ, okay. I should be all right now. Okay. 
Okay, bit clear. So that's setting up DMA. So you can see, this is a common one that I see here. Moving into the DMA there, 8210, which enables all the DMA and then enables the disk DMA. So that's handy. Okay. Oh, that looks like that is... Oh, yeah, okay. So that's going to go... There. Was there a nine six? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, that's waiting, isn't it? <coughs> <coughs> no ops for timing. Yeah, yeah. This is a terrible loader. It doesn't work on anything, which is why it's good that we replace it. Yeah, that's no good. Five six two. And then jump to 800. Okay, so let's get this to read the first chunk. Uh, assemble 51C, BRA 51C. <coughs> Don't know why I've got such a tickly cough all of a sudden. Right, so where are we? We're there. That was supposed to jump to 400, so we can just make it jump to 400. Yeah. And it's going to run through, blah, 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 blah. Uh, do some stuff. Oof. Okay. I missed where that was going now. <coughs> oh, yeah, there it was. It was BQ to C, yeah. And then... Oh, yeah, then it's just going to loop around there. Right, so... If we do that, okay, it sounds like we've loaded some data, and it was 800, ah, beautiful, okay, so this is, looks like it's going to be where our main loader is, let's go and have a little look at that, we've got a guess where it is, 800, Okay, let's just save that as, let's forget about the first loader that's there, because that's just the one from the boot block. And let's copy this one here that it's loaded off of disk. It's loaded at 800, yep. Okay, and let's just save it. Let's just check there wasn't any hex numbers in there. Okay, let's just save it to 1000. Okay, save, boot, and that's 800 to 1000. Cool, okay. <coughs> Need a pastel maybe, yeah maybe. It won't go well with my beer at the minute though. So, I think, okay, so this is our loader, our initial loader I think. Clear, okay, it clears all the colors. Like the color palette. Okay, jump to 21C, so that looks like that's going to do something. That's obviously where our next chunk of code is going to be loaded to. What's this? That looks like that's just another kind of dodgy disk weight. Yeah. Okay. 82E? Oh, here we go. What is this? Okay. So it looks like we've got a parameter here, which is one. And we've got a multiplied by C. So we've obviously got a table of some kind. And it looks like we've got a table here. So what is that table? So that'd be four long words. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, but it moves one into that, so that'd be C. So actually, if that's that, plus C. 3FC00. 00, zero, 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 two, zero, zero, zero. Okay, and then zero, zero, one, five, zero, zero. So it looks like we've got something that's happening there. So let's let's make some let's just set a breakpoint there. 
where are we? There. Uh. 63E. Look, what? Has not has that not finished loading? That's weird. <coughs> According to me, I'm not dropping any frames. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got zero frames dropped. Zero. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Okay, I don't think that's my internet. I think we'll blame Twitch for that. But yes, we do appear to be back. Thanks for uh, triggering that there, um, uh, Platon. It did work. Um, that's why it's called a freezer. Mm. Right. It's something weird. Like, we shouldn't be there. That looks like he's not finished loading or something. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Twitch is being a buck. Yeah, let's go. Let's go from the top. Uh, okay, LM1 colon boot comma 800, was it? No, let's just, let's just start from the top again. Same. Oh, hang on. Right. <clears throat> okay, yeah. I was thinking I'd recognise that beat block code. It's mine. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, let's make sure that this is actually doing the right thing. Yeah, right. So now, oh wow, something is a uh, something is causing me some trouble here. Let's make that right protect us right. Here. Your stream pauses often tonight. I don't know why. Oh weird. I've got the. I've at least got it recording. So if you miss anything, it will be on the old uh, on the old YouTube later. It's reading the wrong drive again. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's do this again. Go 30040. Yeah. What on earth? Right. Uh, is everything all right now? Yeah, I switched off the Amiga because it's been a bit weird that. So is Twitch. Okay. It's fine here, good. Okay, let's try this again. 30040. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 3123C. Right, and we should. There we go. Okay, so yeah. My Amiga broke Twitch. I mean, yeah, probably. Okay, so let's... Um, where is it? There it is. Okay, so assemble that. BRA51C. There we go. And then let's go to 400. Okay. Give it some time. Now, if we look at the registers... 
5-1-C, jump into 5-1-C. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. SM1, colon, boot, come of 800 to 1,000. Okay. Did you press freeze button on your router by mistake? <laughs> My router is... It's at the other end of the house, so... Right. Okay, so this is our game loader, per se. <clears throat> it seems to have some sh fluff in here, which we might be able to use, actually. In fact, that is what we're going to do first of all. Actually, do not yet. Right. So, as I said... Uh, oh, yeah, now here it is. Yeah, so let's see what calls that, because I've got a suspicion that's the load routine. We've got one thing that calls it. And it moves one into D0. And D0 appears to be our file number. So in actual fact, the data that it's going to load, the parameters for that are in C there. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 3, FC 0, 0, and then 2000, which I think is our load address there. I think that's our disk position, load address, and number of bytes. I think we've got three parameters for this loader. It's a file table, yeah, except there's only one file used. <coughs> uh, Ida Pro does have a, a script. If you can find it, uh, I think I might have it somewhere that can load uh, hunks from an Amiga executable and put them straight into and do all the labels for the relocation points. Which is quite handy, but, you know, it's not using an action replay. Night Shift, thank you very much for the follow, uh, for the sub, mate. Right, so... Okay, let's just... Um, oh, yeah, there's a trick in here, right? You can tell here, right? So, it multiplies the parameter by C. So, that's three long words. Points to the uh, file table. It goes to the position of the parameters that we need. Moves the first parameter into D4. The second parameter into A2, which gives us a clue as to that is the destination data. And then adds the second parameter, sorry, the third parameter, which we think is the length into A3. So I think, I think we're good for that. Right, and then moves D4, which is the start, I think we're assuming it's the start position on the disk, right? And I think this will determine. So this is the trick, right? So I think this is, I think this is it. Let's say plus C, yeah. So we've got three FC00, which is that parameter, that first parameter, right? So what does this do? There's a logical shift by eight, which we can Okay, which is A E E eight. Okay, and then E E eight shifted by another two. That doesn't work at all, does it? So alright. It doesn't do shifting. Don't know what the hell that's doing. Okay, so we know what a shift by eight is, so that's a two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So let's divide that by thirty-two. Okay. One F E zero, is that right? Two four oh no, two four eight sixteen. 32, 64, 128, sorry, yeah. Getting my maths wrong. Okay, so seven, and then it divides that again. Sorry, seven F8 by another four. Okay, one FE, yeah. And then one FE is divided by five. 66 okay so uh, I don't know what it's out I think it's basically telling us sector 102 on disk yeah yeah but is it so what is, uh, ah, okay, so here's a question, right? What is 3FC00 divided by 66? That doesn't seem right. 
How did I calculate this before? Hang on. Oh no, because that's... Fucking hell, you're an idiot, Ian. 3FC, so 3FC. One by four, it's FC. Okay. Uh, FC, divided by five, 32. What's that divided by 32? 4166. This still doesn't... This is not making sense. Oh! 3FC, not 3... Ah. There we go. Right. We've got it. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was being an idiot. So, we know... Uh, 33 multiplied by 1400 is 3FC00, which means our track sizes on this game are that many bytes. That's how big a track is. Exactly, yeah. And I think you can probably calculate yourselves further elsewhere, right? But yeah, it's basically saying they've wasted... Um, how much is it? 512 bytes per track to have their uh, copy protection, which can actually be copied by XCopy. So, yeah. Right, which means we should be able to jerry rig this loader. Now, I am going to just nip back a sec so we can do some mathematics, right? Uh, and we can just we do that here so that I can see what I'm doing because I can't at the moment. There we go. And just go desktop, right? <clears throat> so, where was that image we took earlier? Right, so let's say that's uh, our last track here is 50 or 51. Okay, so let's say it's 51 and we multiply that by. 1400. Oh, no, no, hang on, I'm doing that wrong, aren't I? So it's 51 times 2, because there's two sides, right? 66 in hex, 100, right? And then let's multiply that by 1400. That still doesn't seem right. Hang on. 55. No. 51. Times two, yeah. Multiply by one four zero zero. Ah, uh, there we go. That's better. So, I think even with the conservative F, uh, estimate, right? That's how much, uh, including all the spaces. That's how much disk space <coughs> is used, right? Which will fit in our five twelve k slide RAM. <coughs> so I think the plan here is we're going to load the disk into fast RAM and then basically write all of those tracks, write basically the whole of fast RAM <coughs> back to disk onto a separate disk. So we'll drag another disk out. So, right, that's the plan. We know how big that is, but we also need uh, a bit of a plan here because if the loader tries to load any of these empty tracks, it's gonna, it's gonna hate us basically. So that would assume that, let's just, uh, let's just double check here. So, uh, actually, let's let's work this out. So we know that the first track on that side is the boot, and I think the second track does nothing. And then we start there. <coughs> oh Christ! We're done there. <coughs> uh, what's entry zero in the file table? Uh, something that isn't accessed. Um, so yeah, so let's just do some, let's just do some, uh, let's write out a little list here, right? Oh, let's close all these down. So we think, we're going to make the assumption here that we're going to write, read from, we'll call them, we won't bother with the sides, right? So, zero, one, 
track two, yeah, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So that is uh, start track number of tracks, right? So that's twenty-one. <clears throat> and it starts at the top and goes to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, because that one's used and that one isn't, right? Uh, okay, so so that would be zero, that would be one. Okay, so that means after the gap, we start here, which is 13. So that's actually 26, if that's right. I mean, obviously, follow along. Get your calculators out or use your brains. My mental arithmetic is absolutely fucking shocking. So, yeah, please do uh, make sure check check my calculations here. So again, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23 tracks. Okay, <clears throat> 23 tracks there. Stay, came for the crack, stayed for the maths, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's block one and block two dealt with. Right, and just to be cheeky, block three starts at 25 times two plus one. So, uh, so, 50, 51? Yeah. So that'd be track 51, I think. Okay, and that'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I think that one is 17 tracks long. Okay. And again, this one's 37 times 2 plus 1, isn't it? 37 times 2 plus 1, 75. Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, you could put it through the uh, the HXD tools and actually show you what's on the tracks. That would probably make it a bit easier. But Or maybe it's time I wrote a, 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 a tool for reading IPF files. Okay, so thirty. Okay, so that one is thirty-five. So that's only two tracks, and then lastly, track fifty, which is actually a hundred, is one. So <coughs> I think you didn't come here for maths. Well, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so we can calculate all of the sections of the disc that we need to load, right? So. Uh, that's the best way to do this. That's just fucking write them out. Yeah, you can't have programming a hacksaw in without maths, can you? So, okay. So let's do two. Let's do the starts first. Two, mark plug one four zero zero. Okay, so that's two eight zero zero on the start of the disc, and it is twenty one times one four zero zero, which is one a four zero zero. I'm sure that's right, but yeah, we'll double check that. Haxing the hex, yes. Well, we're not haxing anything, we're just we're doing some calculations. Okay, 26. Multiply 1400. 20800. Okay. Oh, what is this tune? Fucking digital expression. Okay, hang on. Shorty of network. Okay, cool. <clears throat> the only one I remember of this, I'll just turn it up a little bit. The only one I've got is the is the extra spicy Mikey remix of this, which is bloody good. Right, okay, so clear that again. 23 times 1400. Okay, yeah, actually this looks I, this is a number I remember, yeah. Okay. And then 51. No, 51 
times 1.00, which is 3FC00, yep. And then 17 on that one, yep, 17 times 1400, so 1500, zero, yep. Then lastly, two more to do, 75 times 1400 is 5DC00 zero, zero, and times 2, which actually we should be able to calculate that in our own heads here. And there we go, 2800 zero, zero, because it's two tracks. And then 100 times 1400, yep, 7D000, zero, 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 and that is 1400. Zero, zero. There we go. So, <clears throat> those are our read areas. Athano is raining, party of 14, welcome in. Uh, if you just joined us, we're cracking, uh, we're cracking copy protection on the Amiga. Um, if you've not seen before, my name's Hoffman, hello. Uh, oh, I should do some shout outs actually. Uh, I, I'm not very good at doing that kind of stuff. Rafi18, welcome in. Athano, there we go. Uh, taken some teller. Nice. Welcome in. Very exciting. Well, welcome in. Um, so we've got to the point now. We're cracking this today. If you just joined us, we're cracking this game called... Uh, I'll show you here. Uh, there we go. Uh, an Amiga game called Archipelagos. There you go. It doesn't want to... It doesn't want to do the thing, but there you go. Um, and it's got a really interesting... Uh, uh, Sides to the protection in the fact that basically there's certain areas of the disc that they don't write any information to um, <clears throat> and what you usually do is just hack the loader I've done it again haven't I? Yeah, there we go and um, uh, just tell it to read the entire disc and then write that to another disc and then replace the loader you can't really do that here we have to tell it to read certain areas of the disc which is what we're going to do next um, so yeah, and then obviously we've got manual protection to deal with as, as well. But what we've done, using that chart, we've just calculated the areas of the disks that we need to steal. So, let's go back to our Amiga. Hang on. There, and then... I just realised what I've done now. Which is that, there we go. Oh yeah, that's asleep. There we go. Uh, can you just do it all again, please? But it'll be on the YouTube later. Don't worry, man. Uh, okay, there's that there. Let me just pull this list across. Oh, come on, Notepad++. Don't be an idiot. Why is that not me? Oh, that's why. I pressed the wrong button. Okay, now I can see it on the other screen. Good, good, good. Right. So... Move that out of the way. On the tubes later, yes, these sessions do get uploaded. Right, so I think what we need to do is let's write our own little routine down. Actually, let's just reset. Reset. Ooh, Take the disc yeah. out. Okay, see so everything that's all good. Okay, so let's, uh, column, did we do boot? It was at 800, wasn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> then one column, boot, comma, 800. Yeah, and then at 400, we're going to write our own little routine here. A zero, set ourselves into supervisor mode, the way I like to set ourselves into supervisor mode, yep. Yeah. Kill off a DMA. Kill off the interrupts. Oh yeah, that's not right. Yeah, and then let's initiate the disk DMA because I don't think I don't think it likes it otherwise. Right. So using our list, eight uh, zero A, which is actually that plus C. So, let's assemble 44. 40C, yeah, 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 that's fine. 
Look, we see it here. We disassemble. Kill. Do that. Okay. Okay, and then let's... Uh, uh, how can we do this? Let's just think, because that's going to set the status register. That's fine-ish. We could cheat that ourselves, actually. Let's set our own status register. Uh, sorry, our own stack pointer, sorry. LEA uh, 400, comma, A7. Okay, let's set our own stack pointer. Right, now let's think about this. So that, that's our parameters. So what we want to do is move dot long word uh, 280, which is our disk start position into 816. And then what we'll do is we'll move dot long word. Actually, yeah, I've got a better idea for that. Right, what we'll do is that's our disk position. We want our disk length. That's the thing that's important. A400, which is in 816 plus 4 is the load address. And then plus another 4 is the length. Okay, so that's 81E. Right. And then what we're going to do is put a couple of no ops in. <coughs> uh, in fact, what we'll do is we we'll do a BSR to 600, right? And then at 600, we'll move dot long word 816 into, uh, let's just do that calculation, 816. So this is the load address that we want, 81A. Okay, into, so we did move that into D0. Add dot long word. Uh, start a far slow RAM. One, two, three, four, five to D0. And then move dot long word D0 into 81A. And then we'll BSR uh, EB0, was it? Yeah. Okay, and then that'll do. Some shenanigans. There's our loader. And then we'll tell that to RTS. And then hopefully that will come back. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Cod 87 uh, Platon, thanks for answering, uh, uh, answering the questions there. Yeah, I'm kind of in the, I'm in a bit of a mode now. I know what we need to do. We're just building a, a ripper, basically. So that'll set that. That's our first location. That's going to get the location, do that. Do that, and then we're going to put an RTS there. And then hopefully that might come back, right? I'm not sure if it will, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. If it, if it manages to load the next file, that'd be amazing. So let's just set this up anyway. Um, so it's 20800 into uh, 816. And then the length is 10, uh, 1 TC00 into 818. Yep. And BSR 600 again. And look, three more to do. 3FC00 into 816. And then. 154. If this works first time, it would be amazing. I don't think it will. <coughs> Someone call a meeting. <laughs> Shut it, you Francis. Uh, okay, and then two more left, which is 5DC00 into 816, and then 2800 into 81E. Had to read that. Oh, I forgot one thing. Ah, oh, that's so fucking annoying. Right, hang on. No, no, we've had, we've outrun. Don't, nobody be running that again. I don't know what the fucking call cooldown is on that one. Uh, Seventy zero zero uh, zero into eight one six, and then move dot long word one four zero zero into eight one e BSR six hundred. Now I've forgotten one thing here. Which is really annoying because I've just written all that code out. I 
Okay, assemble four, 402. Now let's just tell that to BRA to itself, right? So 402, right? So we've got an ending. Now, if those, get, if those come back, that'd be amazing. But we've got one problem that we haven't actually contended with yet, which is what I'm going to do just assemble this at 484, right? Kill the DMA, set all that up, right? And then LEAC, one, two, three, four, five, into A0. Now, uh, what was it? I think we can get away with uh, FFFF into D7, and then clear dot long word, A plus, and then A0, yeah. And then D bra, D7, comma, 4C, six, then do the RA there to somewhere, 400 and something. Right, this is what happens when you're assembling stuff. You start doing stuff. Yeah. So 70, oh, is you got a 720p available. Oh, good. Uh, okay, so what I've forgotten to do is, okay, we're gonna load each of these sections up into slow RAM. Um, but what I haven't done is cleared slow RAM, so what I don't want to do is write a load of shit to disk. Because, you know, no one wants that. Thalamus! How you doing, mate? I hope you are well. Um, I haven't seen anything in my inbox about the old, uh, the thing you messaged me about the other day. Uh, did you get my email right? Or have I missed something? I just, it, I don't want to be the person that's, like, not replying to something, so... You're weller. Oh well, I'm, I mean that's to be fair. That's the, that's what I should have led with, right? I'm, I'm glad you're weller. Uh, and also, yeah, to be fair, like you're not well, so. But yeah, I haven't seen anything, so. Uh, Calderon, welcome in. Right, so I've, I've kind of balls this up a little bit. I need to go back. To, okay. Trap. A couple of all that. So it's 424, right? This is interesting, isn't it? Uh, 424. So that's going to kill that. Okay. So there we want to. I am. Uh, so there. Nope. Uh, BRA 44. Right, so. Oh, you son of a bitch. Right, hang on. Not written this very well. <clears throat> okay, so. Do the trap. Kill the interrupts. BRA to there. Set the stack pointer. No, that's wrong completely. It's 4A4, you idiot. Okay, that's not going to work, is it? Right, hang on. 4 a4, right, let's test this out again. Right, yeah, do that. Jump to there. Clear slow ram, which is the right, yeah, and then go back to 424, which will then start loading files. <coughs> and then hopefully, right, SM Ripper, come off 400 to, is it 1000? Oh, God, no, I don't want German keyboard. <coughs> Okay, I think if we just do that, then it should be a tail off for 1,000. Interesting. Hmm, okay, anyway. 1,000. Okay, that's saved. <coughs> Okay, let's just set a breakpoint and just see if this is go uh, go 400. Right, put disc in. Okay, trace it. K 
kill the DMA. Come on, recover. Kill the interrupts. Enable the disc DMA. Okay. Okay, let's, rather than just running through that as a trace, let's run that. Right, cool. So, where is A0? That's C0. Okay, so, our fast RAM, sorry, our slow RAM. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that looks nice and clean now. Okay, that looks great. So, let's see if... Okay, let's see if this loads the first of our sections. <laughs> okay, okay. That's really promising. You're setting the break point there. It's loaded that first section up. See that from uh, 2800 to one eight, uh, the length of... Okay, right, so... Oh my God, I think we might get this first time, you know. Let's use that one. Right. <clears throat> Third section. Okay. Fourth. This. Is, my God. This is really exciting. Too many breakpoints. Oh, sorry. I just delete all of our other breakpoints. There we go. Right. Two tracks. Oh, mate, so, we've got it. So, if we look at a C02800, right, bam, data. If we look at C2080, uh, 2080, data, yeah. 3FC0, uh, 3FC0, yeah. Data. And you'll see, if we go there and then move back, it'll be empty. Yes! <laughs> uh, what are we messing with? The track loader? Yes. So we just basically uh, coerced the uh, Archipelagos uh, track loader to load each of the sections that actually have data into slow RAM. And now we're going to write all of that back to disk uh, so it's 8000 yeah uh, divided by uh, 1600 which is the size of a standard amiga dos track which is 5d which uh, uh, 5 uh, 5d uh, multiplied by that so 1fe00 yes yeah, so that's fine right <coughs> so we need to write that to disk now uh, Excellent bra job, that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to call this uh, data, right? So the entire game data and everything is will now be on here. Yeah. So right track zero uh, five D from C one two three four five. Rob Smith, uh, resub. Thank you, mate. Just popped in to say hi. I hope you're well, mate. And also, can I just say uh, thank you for um, uh, the drawbridge and making it work with the Grease Weasel. I literally uh, deployed source files from my Amiga via WinUAE 
onto this disc today without having to muck about with ADF files. I just plugged in the Grease Weasel, fired up with UAE, copied some files with my emulator set up to the floppy disc and put it straight into my 500. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, we just, uh, we'll give him a, a quick shout out, actually. Uh, on the right keyboard might help. go uh, I haven't got an advent calendar yet I don't imagine they send them out just yet I think they send them out a bit closer to December I did order one last year but you've ordered it so cool I'll keep my eye out for it it's very useful I tell you what though uh, Rob mate um, listening to it the way it interacts with the disk drive it's a bit scary if I'm honest <laughs> This is very strange. Oh, that's a good point. Um, that'd be a counter track. So that's crashed, doesn't it? Uh. I don't want to miss the last track. Also, this is, I tell you what we'll do to test it, right? We'll do the process again. But if this tries to read and write data from uh, past fast RAM, it's going to crash. <coughs> so we'll do it again. Oh, I tell you what we should have done is just checked which head it got to. Because we've, we've done the calculation, we know it should fit. Actually, no, that's no, the track numbers is, isn't right. <laughs> okay, if this crashes, then we know we've written enough data on the disk. Okay. <coughs> okay, so we did have it right, Flayton. We did have it right. So now we've got a disc with all the data on. Uh, now what we need to do is circumvent the original loader. And we've got that here. Uh, no, in, the, in drive one. So uh, LM1 colon... Uh, Boot, comma, okay, so we do want to circumvent that. Do we need, so we need a load of ourselves first, don't we? <clears throat> this is a good point. Okay, so we need to, we need to, we need to build our own. But what I do need is, uh, I need a quick trip to the office. So I'm going to do another BRB. Be quite quick though, so bear with me.
Right. So, uh, let's build our own loader now. Well, I say build our own loader. What I mean is steal someone else's and then put a wrapper around it to make it good. Or to make it work with what we need it to. So, the file I've got. We don't need to worry about any compression, uh, decompression stuff either here. Because there's, there's no compression used at all in this game. So, just... This is the loader that I've got. Um, if you look at the BC Kid README, it'll point you to the uh, GitHub where I found this. It's tiny, isn't it? Look. Oh shit. Yeah. Small, isn't it? Okay. Now, if I remember rightly. Uh, well, what we'll do is we'll save as first as Arch Loader, right? Okay, <coughs> save it as Arch Loader because it's our own custom loader now. <coughs> it has five, 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 everything a loader needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play that's also whilst I was. Uh, Debugging and playing around with the other loader and saver from uh, Trap Runner source code. Um, Pyru, are you telling me you made this loader? Or are you just taking the piss out of me stealing someone else's loader? <laughs> Either way, it's fine, I don't mind. Now, if I remember rightly, A0 is the load address. Just taking the piss, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. I made this, yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe that is the MFM buffer. Okay. Uh, and then D0 is disk position bytes. Uh, D1 is load size in bytes. And then D2 is drive number, which is quite fantastic. Okay. Um, so how did we do this last time? Um, uh, D Mackie, late for class, no worry. Waiting for Hoff's platoon mix. No, no, that's not happening. Um, okay, so we can assume actually that we're always going to be drive reading from drive two. Uh, we'll force in a MFM buffer of 1,000, even though that's wrong at the moment. Uh, okay, now I can't remember which address they put it in. So let's just... Uh, this is dangerous. Bit late for class two. I'll tell you what, actually, we, let's just do a, a, a little... A couple of things here. Uh, how you doing, Z How you doing, Ricky, mate? I hope you're well. Uh, we can do a nib. Is it nibs? Yeah, uh, Nivs, I don't know if he's still there, but there you go. He, he's got a game called Road Declan out at the moment. And if we do Zen, there you go. Roadcraft demo is out. There you go. Two Amiga developers making fantastic new games for the Amiga. Um, actually, let's get out of that. Let me just save that. Because if I load this file, I'm probably going to need to reboot the system because I don't know where there's any free RAM. So, uh, let's just uh, LM1 colon uh, boot, come about 800. Yep. Okay. Uh, there. Okay, so it's in A0. So we'll assume that it's in A0. Okay, and then what was it again? It was disk position, load address, and length. Okay, cool, cool. Right, let's just let's just reboot it because I've randomly loaded data into RAM somewhere. So disk position, load address, and size. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, Rogue Declan does rock. I should actually have give, give it a good play at some point. <laughs> what you will notice about Amiga game developers in uh, 2023 is that we don't have time to play each other's games. We'll play it for a bit, and then we're too busy removing copy protection from 30-year-old games or writing our own games. So, ah, Arch Loader. Okay, right. <clears throat> so... Okay, yeah, let's just, let's do this the right way, right. So, A0, uh, okay, A0 input is uh, uh, disk pause long. Load address, which is also a long, and then load size, which is also a long. Okay, so. We're going to assume that when we call this loader, A0 will have that as the input. So what we want to do is move dot long word uh, contents of A0 into D0, which is the position, and then we want to move dot long word uh, eight A0 into D1, and then we want to move four comma A0 into A0, and then I think that's all of our parameters converted let's just double check that load address mfm buffer position invites loads of okay yeah cool that is i think that's right <coughs> okay and in terms of this i'm not actually that bothered by that we're just that's going to be our loader Assemble it. Uh, 422 bytes. That's nice for a byte loader, isn't it? That's very good. Oh, the other thing we need to do is just uh, move Q into D0. Oh, ah, no, hang on. There is one thing I've forgotten. Test dot long with D0. Uh, BNE, fuck, right? And then fuck will uh, move dot W red. Into DFF 180, and then BRA dot fuck. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, well spotted there, uh, plate. Yeah, it is BNE. <clears throat> okay. Let's add a few more bytes, but at least we know it'll stop. Hitch! Hello, how you doing, mate? I know. Uh, oh, yeah, move Q hash zero into D zero just for safety's sake. I just, fine. I hope you're well, mate. Oh, that doesn't matter. It's just, in fact, we can just put that as a. It's just an arbitrary number because I can't remember where the buffer's supposed to go at the moment. That's the MFM buffer or the disk buffer for the DMA. I don't, I, I'm not, I can't remember what address. I didn't check what address it's supposed to go to, so I'm just putting it in as an arbitrary address, and then we can just we can just patch it when we get to the um, when we get to the actual replay. Okay. Cool. Looks like we've got a loader with error handling that will load one of those things. Right. <coughs> uh, okay. Here we go. Uh, LM0 colon source slash arch loader to 41234. Okay. And that, oh, that is so tiny, isn't it? I should have put end at the end of that, really, but never mind. Okay, four zero. Okay, so we can see our code now. There, there we go. Four thousand. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, and then let's just. So it's four zero zero two zero. So yeah, yeah. And then let's just do that. 
That looks like that's just hunk info, but fuck it now, let's save that as well. It doesn't matter. It's such a tiny loader. SM1 colon loader, comma 40020 to 41E2. Fuck it, yeah, that'll do. E2. One, four, zero, one, E2. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <coughs> um, we had an A500 loader that failed spectacularly on the 1200. Uh, it fit in the tw in the cache and the floppy drive went brrrr. <laughs> uh, Frode, uh, yeah, that's you have to be careful with that kind of stuff. So, you have to be very, very careful. Okay, so we've got a loader now. Okay, cool, right, so, uh, this can be saved, we don't need that anymore. Uh, this is our new data disk. <clears throat> uh, Pyru, uh, I'm actually a lover of uh, people that use the, um, uh, the, um, the V-Sync uh, timers, because then you know no music routines can break your loader, so. And you know no game can use a timer and then break your loader. Because the, the one constant is you can read the vertical and horizontal beam position and nothing can change that. So, yeah, it's a sensible way to do it. but Which is what all my loaders appear to be doing. So And savers. Yes, yeah, so you never have that problem. Um, right, so what have we got on disc one? So we've got... We've got a boot. I think we can circumvent that completely though. We don't think we need that. Although we could just like, fuck it, let's just uh, boot. Let's load that into 800. Okay, and then in 400. Actually, we've got until 2000 as well, haven't we? So. Uh, let's, just, uh, let's just clean things up, shall we? Try to, oh, it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, we've got loads of space on this fucking thing, haven't we? Uh, LM1 colon. Uh, okay, fuck it now. Let's do it this way then. So, let's set up our, our hack, right? So the way I'm going to do this is slightly uh, different to how some cracks are done. We're going to basically patch more like a WHD load where, where um, uh, you don't you don't change the binary data. You write patches to feed into. So you like write a patch to patch that. That will then patch out to jump to another routine to patch this. So that's how that's the kind of process we're going to take today. Uh, 80 and then trap zero again not minus zero I mean that's still zero but never mind 7 FFF comma DFF 096 7 FF DFF 09A and then we'll just to be nice we'll clear the background color as well okay and then at 500 we're gonna load our loader Okay, LM loader, comma, 500. We'll just put that there, uh, one. Yeah, cool, plenty of space. 500 should be, in fact, no, fuck it. let's do it at 600. So we've got space. Yeah, cool, cool, that's, yeah, that'll get us to there. Fine. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll disassemble 800. Yep, that's cool. In fact, we'll skip that as well. LEA 400. No, if I can, we'll let it do that. In fact, we'll cheat because I know that the game jumps to 2000. So we'll put that as our stack pointer. And then we'll be all right, EB0. Okay. So. Where are we? Oh, 
Okay, and then that'll start that. Which will then try and load a file. There are some other things that we will need to patch out. Okay, and then that'll do that. And then our patch here will be... BSR 600. Move M dot L. A7 plus, we need to reset the stack. D0 to D7, A0 to A6. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. Patch that out and then we'll RTS. Right, so that will replace our loader, right? That will get into A0, the address. We'll jump to that, do our stuff, reset all of that, and then just quit. Right. 400 to 1,000, I think it was that we had it at. Okay. <coughs> so, a new little hack, BRAEB000, yeah, that'll do that. And then that'll try and jump to there. So let's set a break point there. Let's put our disc in, and then let's see if, oh fuck, no, 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 we fucked up, we fucked up. Oh, I fucked up, you have fucked up. What I haven't done. Is worked out. 7300, okay, yeah, there we go. That's the MFM buffer, there we go. save that. Uh, I'm not watching chat at the moment. I hope you're all uh, doing doing well and doing fine. We're just in the... You absolute shitbag. Why have you... It always does this, doesn't it? Format Q. We have to just assume that the load is fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now save that. Okay, there we go. Much easier to recover the disc when... Uh... Okay, right. So, <clears throat> it's going to be fine. Right, so remember we've ripped all of the game data from here, uh, from the original disc onto here, a standard readable Amiga disc now. Put that into drive zero. We've now got our bootloader that is patched to call our new routine. It does some other stuff that's probably horrifically bad, which we'll, we'll patch out later. But, effectively, that's what we need to do. Yeah, that will jump to 600, which will then store all the stuff again and then get rid of D0 for whatever reason. Lots of pushing onto the stack, but fuck it. Yeah, 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 yeah. BNE, yeah, the load error, and then it will do the thing. Okay. So, that means if we get to here, let's put a breakpoint in there. If we get to 21C, there should be data there. There should be code there. Go. go there it is okay so nice okay so we're we're kind of we're halfway there right so that will jump to there and I think there's probably a load very quickly in here actually let's just keep going Uh, I'm not sure why you did that night shift. That's because you uh, you, you can't see. 
I mean, this, the right screen's up. So, there you go. Okay, that's not uh, that's not helping, is it? 201C. So we need to find the... There's another loader in here. How do I find, oh, maybe it's a 72123, let's just have a look at that. 72, was it, is that where we put it, 600? 73, FA 73123, maybe they've just. Hmm, okay, this is, uh, okay. So we've patched it out, but there might be a way of... Oh, yeah, actually, let's have a look at that. HCRC, that's it. Fine string. HCRC. Ah-ha-ha-ha! There we go. Okay, there's the other loader. It looks incredibly fucking familiar, doesn't it? Okay. So... We'll do that clear, but we'll do that clear. So we'll, we'll jump into there at BFF4. So remember, I'll just write that down, BFF4, so I don't forget it. Right. So you can see here, Again, the same thing, right? If we look here, it's a few files. It's basically a file table again. It's the same thing. And there's another thing that basically so jump past that and just whatever is in A0 will be the uh, will be the thing. Okay, so we need to clear that bit, I imagine, just to be safe. And then the other thing we need to do is... Uh... Let's just keep going. It should tell us in here somewhere. Oh, there, 5F78. So actually, if we just use that, that's the disk pointer, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Uh, so LM1 colon new boot, comma 400. Yeah, cool. Okay. We just use that as our address because nothing's up there yet. 5F780. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, that's that bit done. So we know that the MFM buffer is going to be the same for loading in both areas. We need a lost the plot meme. Yeah, especially when I go off on one a bit. But don't worry, we're nearly there. So basically, to recap, uh, we read the boot block. From the boot block, we got the original bootloader. <coughs> uh, from that, we determined uh, the track sizes, and from the image that we had earlier when we wrote the disk out, we worked out where all the sections of the disk were. We've now made a disk in a standard Amiga DOS disk that can be read, you know, and copied. But now we need to basically patch all of the loaders to use our new loader that we just built um, via DevPack. And we're just patching, we've patched the first loader in the bootloader. Now we're just patching the second loader in the game. And that's where we are. And that is currently, we'll, our patch point will be BFF4 is where it will be. Okay, that's where it will be. So that's where it starts doing that. So, um, so we've just loaded our bootloader goes there yep <clears throat> so 42e is free it'll jump there and it'll jump to 21c so what we'll do is 40 400 so we need a second patch point so that jump there will start the game code but we can't start the game code without patching the secondary loader so what we'll do Bam, okay, so 42E, so we'll disassemble that and we'll tell that to go to 42E. And then in 42E, 
for Tui. We now need to do some some patching here and then jump to 201C. Right, and that patching is uh, disassemble BFF4, which is there, and we'll uh, uh, JSR 600, restore the registers. Let me just check that, BFF0, E0, D0, let's just check which, okay, so it's all of the, Oh yeah, it's all the registers, isn't it? Okay, yeah. So there. So we'll need to move those back. A7 plus D0 to D7, A0 to A6, and then quit. Right, so. That's what we need. Which is all of that. Uh, up to 47.5. Okay, so. Uh, to simple 400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. 42E. So. Assemble 42E. Move dot long word. Ha. Whoa. 4E. B8. 06. Okay. 00. zero into. BFF4, yep. One, two, three, four, yeah, and then move dot long word. 4C DF 7F F into BF 4 plus 4. Move dot W 4E57, because I know that's the end of uh, our routine or our patch, and that's BFF4 plus A. And then we want to jump to 201C. We'll do that as a long. Right. Bam. Okay. You jump to there. Yeah. Follow that through. That will jump to 42E. Put in the patch for our loader. There's more stuff that I think we will need to do. But if it loads. Tick tock. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm in the mode at the minute, sorry. Right. How many channel points you got left, Francis? 
Um, that's the question, really, isn't it? And yeah, I do need to increase the, the call out timer on that so you can only do it once per stream. Oh, you'll nearly run out then. That's fine then. Okay. That's fine. You've got, you've got like one more play and then maybe one more in like a month's time. So that's fine. Okay. Let's get rid of that keyboard. Right. So we haven't cracked the, uh, the manual protection yet. That might be next week, but let's just see if, uh, fix the RTS. The RTS is correct. Isn't it? Uh, BFF4 4E75 Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, yeah it's correct. Yeah, basically we, we we get to that point, we jump into our loader, we restore the stack, and then we quit. So, yeah, yeah, it's not a no-op. It's not a no-op. Okay, so theoretically speaking, That disc's in there. If we do that, the game should load. So I'm gonna I'm gonna apply some tension. Oh, okay. Well, I set a breakpoint, did I? Uh, it's some four two e. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just set another breakpoint so the patch happens. Okay. Okay, which means at BFF4, we should have a jump to our loader, a restore of all the registers, and then RTS. Okay, so. Oh. Okay, we're half there, halfway there. Halfway. Okay. Halfway. Don't ship it yet, mate. Can't do that, mate. That, Andy, that was, it was it's too premature. The game is currently stuck. Because uh, their loader has uh, start and stop routines. 50% is bloody good. It's not bad. Right, but we've got some more patch points to do. So let's just, uh, let's see if we can get... Oh. Some music on. And then let's just check. Right, uh, disassemble B, FF4. Okay, and then let's just see what is called around that. Finding anything? What's going on with that? Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. Okay, move kit. So, okay, so we've got. Let's start writing some of these down because I think these are these are junk, right? What's that? Yeah, that's. So we don't need to do that anymore. C four nine six. So C four nine six. Yeah. That's some shitty disc routine we don't need anymore. No, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not going to touch that one. That's one that is a problem, right? So, C4, F6. That one also needs patching out. So, a differently broken version is DLC. <laughs> 
What's that using ice from the boot block? I don't know. Launch a correct in flight. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 we're not doing that. That's not how we do things at TTE. More importantly, where are we? C5. So we could get out of this by just patching that out, but... Come on, let's see where we are. Uh, Pyru, this entire loader is an absolute shower of shit, if I'm honest. You going to bed now, Jab? No worries, mate. Thanks for uh, tuning in. It's bit test, BTST. I thought that would have come up with something, but maybe it does something else. These all need patching out, if I'm honest. Uh. Right, let's try... Uh, okay, LM1 colon, boot 2, was not it? Uh, 400. <sighs> okay, uh, Tism 400, yeah, la, 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 la. Yeah, there's our patch point. Okay, so, move.w, uh, 4E75, which is an RTS, into C4F6, because we know that is a bullshit routine we don't need to call anymore. 4E75 into C496, 496. Uh, let's jump to 200, 201C there. I don't think that's going to do it, because actually we are currently... Tra oh, we're trapped here, aren't we? So what's called that fucking thing? Because you don't need to do that anymore. Bit set is bit set. Uh, because if you've got a, if the CIA registers, um, it's mostly bits that you have to uh, deal with. Jesus Christ, it's fucking calling that shit. Okay, BFA, BF0A, that's probably where we want to stop it. Okay, something else calling that. Let's see if we can find what's calling. Okay, that's just that calling that, isn't it? Yeah, that's another, that's a load routine of some sort. Oh dear, what the fuck's happened there? Okay. Is there anything calling that? Because that's obviously where the address, where the thing is. Let's give this a moment. Okay. Let's put one in there as well. B E seven C. Okay, let's put one in there. Let's see if we, see if that's enough to that's enough to kick this thing into touch and get it working. Four E seven five into B E seven C, and then jump to two zero one C. Yep. Two E. Yep. Uh, 42E. That's our new patch point, so just patched out a bunch of old disc routines, I think. We'll call that boot 3. 400 to 1000.
Yeah, there's all sorts of oddities that go on with that stuff. Right. From the top. There's some more patching that needs to happen to tidy this up. Everyone loves this tune, don't they? Oh. Okay, that's not right, is it? <laughs> Why are we stuck? Where are we stuck? Okay, something has gone wrong. Oh, fucking disc routines of this thing are ridiculous. Okay, instead of patching, let's patch that. C488, right, LM1, come on, boot 3, come on. Uh, December 42E, yeah, there we go. Rather than patching that out, let's patch C488. 448, sorry. There we go. Okay, let's see if that. Uh, latest Francis. No worries, mate. Uh, I'll see you on Monday. Still fucking chopped, stuck here in it. Hang on. Okay, so let's just C5, there we go, C5, 3E. Okay, fuck it, let's get that one done. Okay, move.w45 to C5, 3E, and then jump. 201C and then it's a mod of boot five just to be safe. <coughs> okay, save that right. The fuck? Why is that still trapped there? Hang on. Come on. Uh, three, four. C three two E. Hang on. Uh, December four two E. Five three E. Uh, and that is three two E. Three two E. We don't have that. Right. Fuck it. Let's just patch that one out as well. Boot five or four four. I should really check this. Four or oh, five. Okay. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right, this is, I think this is the patch that will get it to at least show the other copy protection. Hang on, C32, C32E. Yeah, that has to load that in to be able to do that. Okay, yeah, okay. 
symbol move dot w hash five five into c three two a three two eight yeah jump to two one c save that again as fucking speed five it's fine four hundred to one thousand right I know we've gone quiet but let's just do it again loading yes <laughs> <laughs> Please write. <clears throat> Superb, yes. Right. We're not we're not gonna defeat this second bit today. I do have it on my notepad somewhere. We could get past it, but I can't remember. Hang on. I didn't know, make a note. Press any key there. We're going to skip that. Okay. <coughs> uh, put some tunes back on. Let's just have a quick look. Oh, look at that. 136EE. Ooh, that is busy, isn't it? Registers. Oh dear, is that? Oh, is that there already? Is it? Oh dear. Um. Uh, compare that. <laughs> okay, forty-five. This is a key, this is a key code, isn't it? 45. So BQ 345D is 45. I don't, I don't think that's enter, is it? Ah, here we go. Enter. If you press enter, move that into. Okay, we can see that. Move A0 into D1. Move that to compare that. If they're not equal, then yeah, yeah. Uh, compare 30 into D0, BQ, 3, uh, okay, 5, 9, C. So actually, uh, I think we find that if we're at this position, 137, 137E8. So if we tell it to jump to 137E8, <laughs> okay. <coughs> that was very easy, wasn't it? Yeah. There we go. Uh <laughs> now to fit, that's it. You just have to hit the hit the things and uh, yeah. Exactly. There we go. So that I mean, to be fair, at the moment, uh, it's not great because we have to actually uh, we haven't patched it yet. So the, what I want to do is. Uh, because uh, we've run out of time, it's eleven o'clock now, so we have to we're, we're gonna have to wrap up. So 
there's a few things that we need to do. First of all, you won't see it here. But if I go past level 2, it will try and save onto here. There's no save routines at the moment because we disabled all the disk shit. So we need to fix that. Also, we want to permanently patch so that it doesn't request to press any key. And it doesn't ask you to put in a code. It just starts the game, right? We want to just completely remove all of that. So... Uh, does level 5 work? Le every level from 0 to 100 is loaded from disk. Oh, Keen, you little scamp, you. Um, terrible Fire, Chips and Bricks, uh, Corporal uh, John Lund, Tinji at Fairlight, Subaland, uh, who is that? Uh, Robert Yates, uh, Satnav Man, Rose Tinted Spectrum, who I am on the their 24 hour Disney stream on Saturday. Um, but yeah, um, I haven't got a thing for that. And we're wrapping up. But yeah, I'll put it on the socials later. Um, uh, Somersault and Dashy Dog, give Commander Keen a big hug because he's giving you a lovely, lovely sub. Yes. Thank you, mate. Much respect. Love you loads. You're awesome. Uh, Commander Keen is a legend around here. Um, so yeah, so we're in, we're in good stead right now, right? Uh, we are. Uh, we need to remove that novella protection completely, so it's nice and smooth. And then we need to create a save routine for when you uh, get past a certain level. So um, yes, that's where we're at. Wow. Okay, that was um. Yeah. So we'll, uh, what I'll do is rather than like plowing on ahead and doing a release, I'll save this until next week, and then we'll. Uh, We'll get that wrapped up, and then we'll get that as a release as well. And then shortly after that, we will be um, cracking Pugsy. And this is a four disc game, so I want to make it less than that. So yes, that's what we're going to do. Um, right, uh, let's put some tunes on and then work out what on earth we are doing now. Uh, hang on. I know this sounds like absolute mess right now. Bear with me a second. But we're not doing to one disc, but we're definitely going to shave one disc off of that list. There we go. We're back. Uh, packing, uh, packing PS1 games onto floppy disc. I don't think so. Um, okay, we don't need any of that. We just need uh, some of that so that um, uh, uh, so I can find out who we're going to go to because, uh, you know, obviously we like to do the whole raid thing. No, I'll convert them to AGA, mate. We all know what we need to do. Just... Oh, you son of a... I'm trying to sign off here. Um, uh, okay. Well, we're going to have to do it. I wonder who coded Pugsy. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, okay, hang on. It's all right. Corrupted, no worries, mate. Thanks for joining. Uh, what was that tune you wanted? Uh, Deep Butterfly Yoke. Let's see if that comes up with a module. Yes, YouTube. I don't want YouTube. Mod Archive. Uh... Okay, that looks good. Is the artist name there? Doesn't say anything, does it? Uh, okay. C colon slash dev tools slash pt2 clone. Yep. Okay, we just get this together. Let's put the request in, we have to do it. Uh, open the folder, yeah. Chrome. Right. So I know you can't see anything at the moment, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I found it, found it, found it, found it, found it, right. For any seven, because he's requested it, this is a uh, deep butterfly by Yoke.
There we go. Nice pick, mate. That's a good one, that. I like that. It's very short, though. <laughs> it's like two minutes long. That is... Uh, uh, it might need a re-edit or some looping. So, yeah, there we go. That is us done for today. We've uh, released BC Kid. Uh, one disc version with saving. Um, and we're halfway through cracking. Uh, Archipelagos... Uh, with uh, fantastic uh, saving functions that we will add, but not quite yet. We just need to um, need to sort out some other patching first, like that Novella protection, which we've obviously bypassed, but we need to patch it out completely. So, so yes, uh, Commander Keen, uh, Gully Rider, Tune, yes, uh, NE7, JC1980, Commander Keen, uh, Amazing Pillar, Lars 18th. Uh, Hooverphonic, uh, Topstream, d -Mackey, thank you mate, uh, Wazuk, uh, Kato, um, uh, everyone else, uh, Senior K, uh, I think I'd probably, uh, Booney64, thanks for the stream, thank you, Braxton, no, uh, hello, Leviathan, uh, everyone else, uh, let me just, uh, close that, and then we're gonna find someone to raid, um, because, you know, let's, let's keep it going, shall we, peeps, that's what we need to do. TTE for the win. Uh, what are they doing? Uh, oh. Uh, oh, let's have a look. Oh, what a tune. Uh, anyway, um, fuck it. Let's go to Charlie Far because that's you know. Charlie's Charlie's our guy. Darn geek TTE for the win. Yes, definitely. Uh, what on earth? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Oh, Twitch, don't switch stuff around like that. That's very annoying. Uh, right, let's raid Charlie because he's playing games and he's trying to... Oh my God, he looks like he's playing an old Amiga game. <laughs> so anyway, I will be back on Monday for a DJ stream. You know that thing where we play records and we just drink and have fun. You know, that's what we're going to do. Um, and I will see you then. Uh, uh, but also, if you tune into uh, Roasted to Spectrum on Saturday, you'll see me there about six o'clock talking about Dizzy and all things retro. So that'll be fun. Uh, Ripper Doc, uh, Eight Curl, Booney, Nivrig, Night All, much love. Uh, let's go and raid uh, our man Charlie. Awesome. And have a bit of TTE Crack Crow just to sign off. Bye bye. <laughs>